kind of leading practices and beliefs in Vedas or in Upanishads. In what ways moral questions were dealt with, as it was dealt in Ramayana or Mahabharata. So moral questions, ethical questions, questions about spirituality became the main question. As opposed to that in Western philosophy, which is typically uh, language oriented, and we studied a lot of philosophers of language. So how do you analyze a particular sentence? How do you get the meaning out of a particular sentence? Became very, very important question. But these questions also are very disciplinary. They were narrow and they were taking you back to certain texts which do not have any connection with your immediate social reality. So you suffer a certain kind of alienation by studying a discipline like philosophy just as you suffer a certain kind of alienation by studying a discipline like economics. So I realized that. And then came another moment of uh, opening up when I had professors like Professor Batula and Professor Ashokacharya. I was surprised to hear Professor Ashokacharya all the time. Hearing him in early 90s was a major eye-opener and a surprise. For the first time, he talked about post-structuralism and post-modernism. That too coming from political science to philosophy, he introduced us to some of the philosophers and some of these philosophers I carried through in my own research. And Professor Botola, coming from geography, raised certain questions about political economy and also about philosophy and established a kind of a foundational link between philosophy and political economy. And of course, he pointed to us this entire Marxist tradition, the Althusarian tradition, the tradition of Polanges, the tradition of Foucault, and also uh, took us to a variety of new questioning of the contemporary politics and contemporary economy. Of course, the questions that were raised at that point of time were more about why the society is shaping itself up in a certain way, what are the new forces of globalization, why neoliberal economy is coming and replacing our traditional economy or the existing state-supported capitalist economy. Those were the kind of questions. And corresponding to those questions, why there are these new kind of assertion of castes in 90s, early 90s, if you remember, rise of BP Singh and the demand for reservation, huge mobilization across the country, and also counter mobilization that wanted to oppose Mandel Commission report. And then comes this demolition of Babri Mosque. So on the one hand, you have Mandel. On the other hand, you have Kamandal. And on the other hand, you have Professor Manmohan Singh bringing globalization and what is popularly known as LEP, liberalization and all that. So those questions were asked, but disciplines had no answer to those questions. The narrow answers that were formulated by respective disciplines in the 90s were not at all satisfactory. So one had to really look for certain other ways. Then come certain interventions from the West. And the intervention that came from the West was in the form of a kind of a sharing between one discipline and another. Sharing in the sense that you can have an ethnography about how a farm is running itself. You can have an ethnographic study about how an agricultural community is trying to sustain itself. Uh, ethnography became a rallying point for a variety of disciplines. And what is ethnography? Unfortunately, in India, in 19th century, we had some studies on ethnography and ethnology. Ethnography and ethnology were soon replaced by social anthropology. And so there was this movement from ethnography to anthropology. Ethnography, which was more a French and German kind of a discipline, and anthropology, which was more a British kind of a discipline. There was this tussle between French-German way of doing ethnography and the British way of doing anthropology. And in that tussle, because we were colonized by Britishers, so we favored probably anthropology, social anthropology, and cultural anthropology. And then soon social and cultural anthropology were torn apart by what is called as physical anthropology. So, we were really torn in a very difficult tightrope walk between social, cultural and physical anthropology. So anthropology also led us to a situation where we remained 
somewhat distant, somewhat alienated, somewhat refined in our understanding of tribes, communities and societies. Then the point of rescue to some extent came from sociology because sociology wanted to explain the relationship between caste and class. The question was, is there a continuum from caste to class and class to caste? And you have a huge chunk of literature that discussed this question. You also had a huge chunk of literature discussing questions about tribes. Largely, this literature came from social anthropology and also from physical anthropology. So, uh, social anthropology and physical anthropology were trying to understand whether at the genetic level, whether at the level of uh, certain constituents of the body, like blood, like hair strain, like fingerprint, like studying the bones and anatomy, whether we can establish a certain kind of a similarity and symmetry on the basis of which we can codify castes, tribes and various communities in our country. Now this resulted into a very peculiar kind of literature, a literature called People of India series, which is published by Anthropological Survey of India and you have some 70 volumes starting with uh, tribes like Gons, Bones, going to Nilgiris and down to Andaman and Nicobar. And if we look at these descriptions, we see a peculiar kind of a bringing together, a kind of an aggregation, a kind of combination between physical and cultural anthropology. But this really doesn't answer the question, what is the basis of the identity that a tribe prescribes for itself? What is the basis of identity of a community? and how that identity translates into a kind of a holistic worldview in terms of which a community or a tribe or a caste try to exist in the larger multicultural, multi-religious uh, social framework that we have. So the question remained unanswered, yet there was a certain kind of analysis on the basis of certain certain isolated elements that were taken out of a community or a caste or a tribe. So what it shows is that the research agenda necessarily ended up by picking up, as Professor Oshokacharya mentioned, by picking up one fragment. And within that fragment, a few elements were isolated. And on those elements, a lot of focus was put. And what was produced as an output was a very narrow, very specialized, very, very method-oriented, closed frame kind of a discussion about a certain trait, about a certain aspect, about a certain pattern, without really combining it with the larger society as we experience it or see it. So therefore, as Gopal Guru has very nicely pointed out, there was a clear-cut division between theoretical Brahmins and empirical Shudras. Seemingly, Indian social sciences were moving towards becoming more and more empirical Shudras without really responding to the possible interdisciplinary kind of theoretical interventions that were happening elsewhere, especially in the West, because no one was ready to take ideas from there and implement it in our country. Even now, if we look at the Western journals, अभी भी हम जब भी वेस्ट से आता कोई जर्नल देखते हैं, जहाँ पे बहुत सारे थियोरेटिकल बात रहते हैं, जिसमें बहुत सारे डिसिप्लिन को एक साथ क्रिएटिव ढंग से मिलाया जाते हैं, और जिसके तहत एक थियोरेटिकल डिस्कशन बनते हैं, और जिसका कोई कोई उदाहरण हमारे अपने जगह से मिलते भी हैं, तब भी हम उसको कभी Rather, we feel like avoiding any, anything that is Western by calling it as colonial, by calling it as American, by calling it an intervention which is alien to our, our own situation. But that is really not the case. The case rather is because we have got fragmented, narrowed down, and we are not able to rise above the narrow limits which we have set for ourselves. Therefore, we are not able to engage ourselves with a kind of broader theoretical vision that is emerging from some of the Western universities. So, what happened? One way, our country's science, 
हमारे देश की ह्यूमैनिटीज मनोबी की विद्या के सभी किसी एक दूसरा डायरेक्शन में जाना स्टार्ट कर दिया ऐसे डायरेक्शन में जाना स्टार्ट कर दिया कि हम कहा पहुंच रहे थे इसके बारे में हमारे कोई चिंता नहीं थी हम कभी सोचे नहीं हम कहा जा रहे हैं और उस तरह वेस्टर्न वर्ल्ड में जो थियोरिटिकल फ्यूशन हो रहा था जहां से बहुत बड़ी बड़ी आइडिया निकल के आए हैं वही आइडिया के साथ हमारे कोई ताल्लुक हमारे कोई संपर्क नहीं बना तो क्या हुआ देर वॉज ए गैप बिटवीन दी वेस्ट एंड वॉट वी हैव बिन डूइंग इन इंडिया एंड दिस गैप हैज इंक्रीज immensely it has become a yawning sucking black hole at this point of time in such a way that what is happening in yale in chicago or in oxford or in cambridge and what is happening in rohtak or shillong have no connect between them there is a complete disconnection there is a huge gap and this is a gap of understanding this is a gap of not being able to cope up with the new kinds of theoretical or uh, empirical research that is coming from the west therefore we have left behind tremendously and at this point of time i'm sorry to say if we look at the syllabus which we are studying at the masters level or the kind of research that we are doing at the doctoral level those researches are at least 15 20 years behind what west had done now this is very interesting you can see our indian journals are publishing works by western scholar scholars on india when western scholars work on india that is published in journals like economic and political weekly in journals like contributions to sociology but you won't you won't see hardly any indian working on western society whose work is getting published in western journals or in indian journals there is a direct kind of knowledge colonization because of two things because of the gap that we created and also because of our inability to rise to a certain standard of research and that's a major major challenge if we have to break this uh, break this stalemate we really need to rework and redefine our own approach to our own discipline and our own methods of investigation in choice of the problem and in articulating the problem in newer modes which i'm sure all of us can do if we make a sincere attempt so indian academy as a whole is not able to respond to this kind of a challenge and that is a big challenge for uh, our 21st century india now apart from that i would like to point out a few more things another very very interesting issue is uh, a kind of a cross disciplinary impulse and we are not able to respond to or accept a cross disciplinary impulse for example in a discipline like literature there is an application of lot of social theory samaj vigyan ke sara tatva jitne tatva samaj vigyan mein hai uske sabse acha upayog sahitya mein sahitya shastra mein nandan नंदन कल नंदन और कला शास्त्र में होते हैं आप देखें किसी भी डिस्कशन वहीं पे आपको सबसे अच्छा वेस्टर्न थियोरी का एप्लीकेशन दिखाई पड़ेगा लेकिन समाज विज्ञान में आप देखें तो समाज विज्ञान में ह्यूमैनिटीज का लिटरेचर का कला का डांस का म्यूजिक का इतने ज्यादा एप्लीकेशन आपको दिखाई नहीं पड़ेगा तो क्या हो रहा है क्रॉस डिसिप्लिनरी जो इम्पल्स बन सकता था वो नहीं बन पा रहा है ग्लोबली ये करेक्ट है इंडिया में तो है है अभी इंडियन स्टेटिक्स पे आप देखिए भारत भारत मुनि का रस्य शास्त्र है हमारे साथ हमारे साथ बहुत सारे वेदास का जो प्रक्रिया है गाने का या परफॉर्म करने का ये सब हमारे साथ है लेकिन इसका साथ जो वेस्टर्न परफॉर्मेंस का जो भारत हुए हैं किसी बैलेट डांस के बारे में सोचिए वेस्टर्न क्लासिकल म्यूजिक के बारे में सोचिए ओपेरा म्यूजिक के बारे में सोचिए या आप रॉक म्यूजिक के बारे में भी सोचिए जो हम लोग सब कंज्यूम कर रहे हैं लेकिन हमारे अपने जो पढ़ाई हो रहा है उसके अंदर ना समाज विज्ञान में ना मानवी के शास्त्र में हम इसके कोई एक्सप्लेनेशन इसके कोई थियोरिटिकल अंडरस्टैंडिंग बना सक रहे हैं बिल्कुल फेलियर है इस मामले में हम लोग तो ऐसे बहुत सारी चीज हम सब कंज्यूम कर रहे हैं और वी आर नॉट इवन एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड आवर ओन सिचुएशन 
either from our point of view or from the western point of view iska matlab hai jo cross disciplinary possibilities hamare samne hai bahut sare institutional aur governmental karan ke tahat hum wo cross disciplinary impulse ko bilkul koi kaam mein laga nahi pa rahe hain hum jante hain ki hamare research aage chal jayega yadi hum political theory ka upayog kare yadi hum politics pe kaam karte hain to hum ye jante hain ki हमारे रिसर्च आगे चल जाएगा जो हम पॉलिटिकल साइकोलॉजी का उपयोग करते हैं जो हम फिलॉसफी में हैं तो हम जानते हैं सोशियोलॉजी का कई थियोरी से हमारे रिसर्च बहुत आगे चले जा सकते हैं लेकिन हम करने के लिए तैयार नहीं है क्योंकि वो करने में कोई प्रोत्साहन नहीं मिलते हैं फंडिंग का बात तो छोड़ ही दिए आपका अपना सुपरवाइजर ये सब काम में आपको कोई प्रोत्साहन नहीं देंगे आपको आगे बढ़ने के लिए नहीं कहेंगे तो इसमें क्या हो रहा है देर इज अ सर्टन काइंड ऑफ रिस्ट्रिक्शन एंड प्रोहिबिशन दैट इज इम्पोज ऑन और दैट इज इम्पोज बाई ए वराइटी ऑफ डिसिप्लिन ऑन दम सेल्स एंड दैट इज प्रोहिबिटिंग एनी अंडरस्टैंडिंग दैट इज कमिंग फ्रॉम अनदर डिसिप्लिन नाउ देर आर सम पीपल हु टॉक अबाउट क्रॉस फर्टिलाइजेशन क्रॉसिंग ऑफ द बाउंडरीज बिटवीन वन डिसिप्लिन एंड अनादर बट क्रॉस फर्टिलाइजेशन और बाउंडरी क्रॉसिंग is not really happening now how it can happen my own understanding is that there are some interdisciplinary disciplines if we can cultivate some of the interdisciplinary disciplines for example political psychology is one discipline which is not studied at all in india or philosophical psychology for that matter which is not studied at all and social theory is another emerging area which is never studied in india what is studied is political theory or sociological theory or something called critical theory which is done in literature department therefore we need to find out which are the interdisciplinary disciplines do we have interdisciplinary disciplines similarly we also have transdisciplinary disciplines for example madam batra was mentioning about disaster research program now disaster research program is subject to all kinds of mockery disaster research program is considered itself as a disaster those who do disaster research in india they look down upon because they are busy about how to do rescue or how to build up some resilience how to develop some embankments how to have some kind of a uh, crisis management mechanism whenever there is a disaster but a disaster research program combines insights starting from philosophy ethics to politics to economics to physics to understanding of the weather science as a chaotic science and it really becomes a transdisciplinary area of merging a number of disciplines so this was five minutes yeah. like a so, yes, sure. so uh, we really don't have a good transdisciplinary research program such as disaster research program now disaster research program is not just about disaster it is also about understanding the human condition the existential situation and within that how a disaster comes and unfolds itself but no one addresses this question everyone addresses it either from a policy point of view or from the point of view having having certain mechanisms which are funded by the state and academics must join those mechanisms in order to garner some funds now this is a way of dovetailing and tailoring a possible transdisciplinary research program i'm just giving you the example of disaster research you can think of a program about uh, health studies if we have a health studies program health studies would include mental health it would include our intellectual health it would also include the health of the society health of the democracy as well so if we have a health studies program that could be a transdisciplinary program similarly if we have a uh, a program like childhood studies or adulthood studies or a program like uh, reading literature for example